Hello, everyone. My name is Kai Hu. I will present our work named Massive Superpoly Recovery with Nested Monomino Predictions. This is a joint work with Sui Sun, Yusuke Todo, Mei Qin Wang, and Chen Ju Wang. This presentation consists of four parts. In the first part, I will give some background knowledge about the cube attack and superpoly recovery. Secondly, I will introduce our first technical contribution about an efficient framework for the massive superpoly recovery. Thirdly, I will show how to do the key recovery attacks based on the massive superpolys we recovered. Lastly, I summarize this work. The cube attack was proposed by Dina and Shamia and Eurocoop 29. In this attack, a Boron polynomial can be simplified by focusing on the coefficient of one cube monomial x2u. The value of the superpoly can be calculated also according to the Mobius transform. For a symmetric cipher system, the superpoly will be a function to, uh, of the secret k Olin if we let the non cube nuts or other bits be zero. If we can recover the AF of the superpoly, then we can get one equation of k and some k information may be extracted. In the very early stage, the superpoly can be recovered by experimental method Olin. Olin simple superpolys can be recovered in this way. A breakthrough occurred at Crypto 2017. Todo, etc. introduced the division property into CubeTag. Then we do not need to rely on the experimental method. Theoretical analysis become possible. There are many following works along this direction. There are also some algebraic methods in the literature. For a composite volume function, the monomial prediction or division property allow us to predict if a monomial x to u does or doesn't appear in the monomial y to v by counting the number of so-called monomial or division trials. For a cube term x to u, if we can determine all possible monomials g k x to u, then the superpoly can be determined accordingly. However, with previous methods, there exist some challenges. The recovered superpolys in literature are all low degree and with small number of terms. However, as the number of rounds increases, superpolys become more and more complex. We took directly the monomial prediction to recover the superpoly for 843 rounds trivial. Unfortunately, no results are obtained for one month. So the challenge is how to recover a massive superpoly. In this paper, we give an efficient framework with nested usage of the monomial prediction. Provided the output bit of a certain round of a stream suffer, we first choose a positive number r0 to expand the output bit uh, to the intermediate states after r minus r zero rounds. In other words, the output bit will be written as a polynomial of the states after the r minus r zero rounds. All the monomials are pushed into the set as to r minus r zero. Then, for each monomial in this set, we construct a MLP model to compute the partial polynomial with the monomial prediction, but we add a time limit tor on this model. So after the time is up, all monominals uh, in S2R minus R0 the set can be grouped into three disjoint sets. In the first case, the MRP model for this monomial is solved but infeasible. Then we know the monomial has no contribution to the final superpoly. In the second case, the MLP model for the monomial is solved but feasible and feasible. Then we can extract the partial polynomial from this monomial. In the last case, the MLP model cannot be determined feasible or infeasible. Then 
we have to expand every monomial to next deeper round states. And we repeat this process. When there is no undetermined set or the determined set is empty, the superpoly is totally recovered. We collect all the partial superpolys along the way and sum them up to the final superpoly. We have a short discussion on the choices of the tor and r, both of which affect the efficiency. As r minus r zero minus r one until r r becomes smaller and closer to zero. In principle, tor should be larger and larger, and r r is chosen such that the number of expanded monominals surpass a given threshold. And in our experiments, we usually choose n as 10,000 or 100,000. Please note that tor and r should be chosen accordingly, according to the concrete experimental environment. Next, I will show some results of this new framework. The first application is for trivial. You can see here five cubes we used in our experiment. These cubes are chosen by adding new indexes one by one to the cube given by Liu in Crypto 2017. And uh, here is the information of the superpoly we recovered. These superpolys are truly massive and contain hundreds and thousands of monominals. All of them involve all k bits. The superpoly for 843 and 844 rounds can be recovered within two weeks, while the superpoly for 845 rounds are within three weeks. And their balancedness is tested by conducting two to 15 randomly chosen keys. The second application is for the gray 128A. And please note that if we assume we can observe the first pre output bit of the initialization phase of gray 128AAD, then the AAD therefore is identical to gray. 1 to 8 a. The two cubes are chosen as R0 and R1. R0 contains all the nonce or RV bits, while R1 contains all except the 30s. The two superpolys we recovered were for uh, 191 runs are out here. Uh, the time for the two superpolys are 3 to 5 days. The third application is for Trivium. Uh, for Trivium. We use a cube with dimension 119, uh, like this. For this cube, and uh, the superpoly of 893 round is a constant one. And for 894 round, the superpoly is a small balanced one with 191 term, the degree is 4. And uh, although this superpoly is very simple, it costs a month to recover it. Next, we discuss why our framework is more efficient. Firstly, the Groovy solver is called in a restricted way. We do not totally rely on its inner optimization. Each call to the solver is limited to a given time limit. Secondly, the divider and the conquer strategy is used. Thirdly, for monominals, it is natural to take the parallelization to speed up the search. And in our experiments, we use 64 threads. The second technical point is the key recovery based on the superpoly that we recovered. Provided the superpoly and the sum of uh, the outputs over the cube, we can construct an equation of the superpoly. For n superpolys, if their joint distribution is p, uh, like this, 
for each value with 0, with 1, until we n minus 1, the probability is corresponding uh, this p. We can calculate the entropy of this distribution using the definition of the entropy. If the entropy is E, then we can recover E bits of K information on average. To know the distribution, we test 2 to 15 randomly chosen Ks to observe this distribution. However, now our superpolies are massive and too complicated. All K bits are involved. An exhaustive search is not impossible to recover information, so we have to use some new techniques. As is well known, Morbius transform is well known as the transformation between the NF and the truth table of a Boron function. The complexity is n times two, uh, n times two to n minus one bit XORs, and the memory is two to n bits. Our superpolis are actually sparse, although it is massive, because comparing to a randomly chosen uh, polynomials, the number of monomials are much less. So for sparse superpolis with a fine grade analysis, the time complexity can be reduced to n times two to n minus two XORs. And then we can use the Mobius transform uh, and our divider conquer strategy to do the key recovery. First, we introduce the disjoint set of a polynomial. Given a superpoly PK with n variables, if KR and KJ are never multiplied together in all monominals of PK, then we say PK, PR and PJ are disjoint. If for a subset of variables D, Every pair of variables E and D are disjoint. We call D a disjoint set. And an example here is here. Uh, you can see K0 and K3 are never multiplied uh, mutually. So we say K, K0 and K3 are disjoint. And the set containing K0 and K3 is a disjoint set. For N superpolys, uh, we can define the common disjoint set if D is a disjoint set for every PI. A, a disjoint set or a common disjoint set uh, can be found with a greedy algorithm on SMT model. Suppose PK has a disjoint set D with M variables and J equals K0, K1 until K n minus 1 except D. Then PK can be written as this form, equation one. When where PIJ is a polynomial of the variable in J. So PIJ involves at most N minus M variables. And we can use Mobius transform to compute the truth table of P0, P1, Pm. And the time complexity for each table is uh, n minus m times 2 to n minus m minus 2. With the uh, m minus 1 choose tables, we can access them and get the values for every k combination in J. The equation 1 will become a linear expression of variables in D. Some k information can be extracted easily. Uh, the time complexity consists of uh, four parts. Uh, firstly, constructing the truth tables, n superpolis, m plus one tables, and n minus m times two to n minus m minus two is the uh, cost to construct uh, one table. Then we can access the uh, tables and uh, construct the linear equations and this costs uh, such complexity. In the third step, we get the value of m minus n bits. Then the remaining, 
the remaining n bits can be determined by solving a set of simple linear equations, and this step costs 2, 2, and minus n gases, which is small. So for each gas in the third step, call the self oracle to verify the key candidate by exhaustive search. And we believe the uh, exhaustive search uh, is the dominant part of the complexity because the uh, steps, the previous steps, contains only bit operations and compared to the initialization of the stream suffer, uh, they are small. The memory complexity uh, is n times m times 2 to n minus m bits to store the m true stables. Finally, here is our key recovery uh, results. All are the current best ones according to the wrong number. So in this, if, uh, in this work, a new efficient framework with nested monomial prediction for massive super poly recovery is presented. We also give a new key recovery attack strategy with mobile transform for massive super poly recovery. The key recovery attacks on Trivium, Green, 100, Green 128A and Equilibrium are improved. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, please write an email to me. Thank you.